Thomas Alive Today presents Goodies. The company that would become Goodies started as a 2,000 square foot small discount apparel store opened in 1953 by Mike Goodfriend and his family. The first Good Friend store located in Athens, Tennessee was modest and family oriented. A big G over the door was the simple logo and the merchandise consisted of irregulars last year's styles and clothes outs piled on tables and packed onto hanging racks. The lighting was poor the customer service sketchy but the lure of good clothes at great prices kept people coming. The bargain store grew slowly over the next 20 years. When outlet and factory stores began to come into their own in the mid-70s Good Friend was in a very competitive niche but stores continued offering seconds and discontinues at discount prices. The chain had expanded to 12 stores by 1972 and had annual revenue of $12 million. Good Friend was squeezed by the proliferation of national outlet stores and discounters and knew something had to change to keep his stores in the game. He looked to his son Bob for help. In 1972 Robert Goodfriend joined the team. With a background in retailing Bob brought outside experience to the family-run operation. He considered the market and decided to take a middle road a path different from that of discounters or department stores. He redirected the company to offer well-recognized fashion names and up-to-the-minute trends at moderate prices. Everything reoriented not around the family seeking a discount but around the average family looking for today's stylish clothes at good prices. The store no longer purchased closed outs irregulars last year's goods or factory seconds. Acknowledging this adjustment of direction the store was renamed Goodies after a college nickname of Bob's. By 1979 the chain had 21 stores and Bob took over the reins of leadership completely as president and CEO. New corporate headquarters were designed in 1990 when the company left the small town of Athens to relocate to Knoxville. Designed by award-winning architectural firm McCarty Halls Abel McCarty Incorporated, the headquarters not only contained an office complex but a completely customized 344,000 square foot clothing distribution center. The state-of-the-art center made it possible to receive new fashions in one day and have them on trucks and out to stores the next making for a minimal time lag in getting the latest fashions to the consumer. The distribution center could process 350,000 garments safely in one day and it was computer linked to each of the chains. Whatever was happening in the store's sellouts poor movers runs on special items was reported back to the main office. Acquisition strategy as well as distribution timelines could be adjusted. Clothes sales were also tracked by color and size for a very precise measure of how business was running from day to day. By 1991 prospering under a reign of technological advantage goodies had seen a decade of meteoric growth. The company closed the year with 91 stores and $273 million in annual sales. It was time to make a public launch. Goodies held its initial public offering in October of that year. It elected a very conservative board of directors and successfully expanded its base of capital. Three years later the company had doubled its 1990 sales figures and growth to 171 stores. Goodies was also gradually remodeling its interiors doing away with tables and updating to clean brightly lit interiors with white aisles and clearly marked departments. The image went from discount house to department store and the prices stayed 10 to 30 percent down from regular department store prices. Just when things were looking their best the conservative board of directors began to clash with Goodies management which wanted to pursue a more aggressive purchasing policy and keep the stores more up to date and better stocked. In a bitter feud Chief Operating Officer Henry Call and Merchandising Executive Tom Kelly left the store in 1992. Bob Goodfriend despite the fact that his dream had developed much of what Goodies had become and that he was one of the members of the original family who started the chain was forcibly ousted from the board. His absence lasted for three months during which he sued the company and eventually won $1.24 million in legal settlement and fees. The store's margin of pre-tax earnings dropped from 5.6% of sales. Although Henry Call and Tom Kelly came back on board in 1995 as president and executive vice president respectively and good friend was accepted back on the board as chairman the store has not yet returned to its pre-schism profitability margin. 
In 1996 it stood at only 3.4%. Climbing back up to 5.6% profitability is a continuing goal for the company and is reiterated in much of its internal literature. Part of Goody's strategy to improve that profit percentage began in 1993 when it was decided to create Goody's own private label merchandise. Establishing a private label was seen to give Goody's long-range control over its inventory. Brand name fashions manufactured by other companies were always outside variables. However by developing its own fashions Goody's management felt that it could more directly please and serve its customers. The first of these private labels was Ivy Crew for Men a stylish golf-inspired collection that became a popular suite of apparel for the store. Estimates in the late 1990s saw that the Ivy Crew label accounted for 18% of the total sales in the men's department. Contracting year by year with overseas manufacturers in Southeast Asia and Central America Goodies has expanded its private labels into all of its clothing departments. It hired John Oak Bath in 1995 an old hand in the Asian rag market to oversee product development. It also hired people away from the limited and bike athletic who were well seasoned in overseas garment development. The expansion of the private label program was viewed by senior management as good as ace in the hole for future profit creation. While maintaining a commitment to national brand name fashions goodies was encouraging in its customers the taste for its own house labels. One of the recurring elements in the story of Goodies is the store's striving to keep a friendly family look and compete with the slick finish outs of its department store competitors. As a part of this effort to stay in tune with its market in the spring of 1995 Goodies came out with a new slogan Goodies feels like you. The logo was redesigned and the whole atmosphere of the stores was redone in shades of upbeat feel good country casual. An in-house brochure recapped the marketing policy as follows, customers like the prices and they like the selection. But most important they feel good about themselves when they wear the clothing they buy at Goodies. The customer first training initiative helped to carry out the theme by teaching store associates to smile and respond to customers immediately. Goodies also followed up on its progress by bringing people from the sales floor to headquarters periodically for roundtable meetings that debriefed associates on the customer experience and gathered grassroots comments about improvement. In 1995 the company opened 13 new stores and saw gross sales of $696.7 million. With better sales aggressive promotion remodeled looks and good friend Call and Kelly firmly back on board Goodies stock rose 150%. Enjoying a calmer political atmosphere Goodies headed into 1996 a year when the company opened 20 new stores and closed only one. Now with a newly picked management team the corporation redirected its policies away from slashing prices quickly on slow moving apparel and more towards holding a stable mid-priced lineup. The company also began to invest more heavily in inventory. The new corporate policy also encouraged a move out of the country the suburbs where many of the chains were located and into metropolitan areas. In 1996 Goodies opened six stores in Atlanta and three in Charlotte. Sales were up 17% over 1995 to $819.1 million and the stores ended the year with no long-term debt. Goodies business was seasonal in nature with the peak seasons being traditional family-oriented times. Goodies made its money during the periods before Christmas Easter and the reopening of school in September these weeks accounting for 35% of the company's annual sales from 1993 to 1996 a trend expected to continue. In late 1996 the company also took a new direction by offering gifts and accessories an approach which was evaluated as profitable and successful. With the addition of non-clothing items Goodies standard merchandise fit in nine carefully tracked categories and the labels in each category fluctuated slightly from year to year as the corporation determined which popular brands would fit into its pricing structure. In 1997 Goodies planned to improve its profit margin by reducing dependence on denim a low-cost leader for the store that brought in almost a quarter of all sales across all departments and increasing its stock of house label merchandise and high margin garments such as women's career clothing. It also continued to lease not own or build its stores in order to avoid long-term debt. 
Goodies look for a very specific sort of location nice strip centers with popular anchor stores in areas where its customers the $30,000 to $50,000 annual income families lived. It planned a minimum of 20 new stores to open in 1997 and its goal was to reach $1 billion in sales by the close of 1998. Part of the strategy to increase sales was sharp advertising. Goodies slogans take a good look and Goodies feels like you were splashed across all of their materials. Goodies advertising was headed by Mary Beth Fox who joined the company in 1992 as a graphic designer. The company's point of sale signs print ads and other sales materials were all designed and distributed in-house. Not only did Goodies aggressively promote itself through ads in the local paper and direct mail but the company also had strong corporate giving and community service programs. Local stores were often the drop-off points for canned goods and clothing to benefit the needy. Goodies also supported the Children's Miracle Network and mobile medical clinics in its communities. The store strived to foster a friendly family image. We're in a position today not to keep pace but to set the pace for our competitors said chairman of the board Bob Goodfriend in 1997. We have the right products we have a great group of associates and we have good locations. If we stay focused on our customers and concentrate hard on the day-to-day -day basics of the business it's a winning combination. Goodies rising stock figures seem to suggest that analysts agree. The stock was purchased by several large brokers to season mutual fund markets. Nevertheless Goodies was in keen competition with a host of rivals that were larger and more established. Department store chains and factory outlet stores provided ongoing competition for the mid-priced family apparel chain. Goodies fortunes took a turn for the worse in 1998. Even though it achieved its $1 billion sales goal expanded into Texas and launched several new private label offerings profits began to show signs of weakness. Warm weather in the third and fourth quarters forced profits down by 17% in 1998 and earnings continued to fall the following year. During 2000 comparable store sales from locations open for at least a year dropped by April 8%. Call resigned that year leaving Bob Goodfriend at the helm with President Lana Kane Crowder. During this period Goodies management team launched a restructuring of the company in order to shore up sales. Faith Popcorn a trend consultant was hired to revamp Goodies image. A June 2001 Knoxville News Sentinel article printed part of Goodfriend's speech at the annual shareholders meeting that summed up the company's strategic direction. As most of you know Goodfriend claimed we are repositioning Goodies. Changes are being made virtually in all areas of our company. The goal of our restructuring is twofold. First and foremost, of course, is to encourage shoppers, women in particular, to see goodies as their first and best option for buying clothing for themselves and their families. Good friend also addressed the issue of competition. There's no question that this battle for our target female consumer is a pretty difficult one. Our competition is equally interested in winning that same battle. While the company worked to recover sales and profits its operating environment remained extremely challenging. The terrorist attacks in 2001 depressed an already weak economy and unseasonable weather was wreaking havoc on sales and inventory levels. Good Friend launched the Goodies Good Friend bus tour that year. He traveled by bus to stores around the country in order to talk to employees and customers about changes they would like to see at Goodies. Despite company efforts Goodies reported a loss of $20.2 million in 2001 the worst financial performance in its history. As a result expansion was scaled back from 18 new store openings in 2001 to just two in 2002. A series of job cuts were launched and six stores were closed. Crowder resigned in 2002 one month after Goodies revealed that a private equity group had offered to buy the company for $6.50 to $7.50 per share. Several shareholders opposed the deal claiming the buyout undervalued the company and that management had failed to negotiate a higher price. In November Goodies announced that negotiations had ended and that it had terminated its plans to sell the company. Goodies management remained optimistic despite sluggish sales. Profits rebounded in 2002 and continued to climb in 2003. 
the company faced a minor setback that year when it was forced to pay $11 million in damages to Tommy Hilfiger after a judge ruled that Goodies had sold counterfeit Hilfiger t-shirts and was guilty of trademark infringement. Goodies acquired the Duck Head brand for $4 million in 2003. The brand was expected to bring in over $60 million in sales in its first year. It also began eyeing Iowa, Pennsylvania and Kansas as potential expansion areas. Along with women's fashions it focused on increasing its lines of expanded sizes for both men and women. Goodies continued to face intense competition while it worked to bolster comparable store sales. With a solid strategy in place it appeared to be well positioned to battle future challenges. By 2004 there were more than 350 stores recording annual sales of $1.3 billion. In 2006 Goodies became a privately held company again when it was acquired by GMM Capital and Prentice Capital Management in January 2006. Sales in 2006 totaled $1.6 billion. In 2008 Goodies filed for Chapter 11 bankruptcy and announced it was to close 69 stores. While Goodies successfully left Chapter 11 bankruptcy it was announced four months later in early January 2009 that Goodies had filed for Chapter 7 bankruptcy and planned to liquidate all of their stores. The chain was then acquired by Stage Stores Incorporated in July 2009 from the bankruptcy auction. In September 2019 it was announced that Goodies along with all other stores operated by Stage Stores Inc. would be converted to Gordman's stores by the end of 2020. On May 10, 2020 Stage announced it had filed for Chapter 11 bankruptcy and that it would liquidate all locations Goodies and Gordman's included all stores closed by the end of 2020. In 2021 Brand X bought the Goodies brand for an undisclosed amount with intentions of re-establishing it in 2022. Find after Thanksgiving prices at Goodies pre-Thanksgiving sale. Starts Wednesday. Shop early and beat the crowds. For one day only, find great savings. 50% off Christmas sweaters. Ladies boots, 50% off. Men's sports shirts, also 50% off. Plus, it's Super Senior Day. Seniors 55 and over take an extra 25% off our after Thanksgiving prices. After Thanksgiving prices start Wednesday during Goodies pre-Thanksgiving sale. Take your goodies. Take your goodies. If you have any fond memories, please indicate it at the comments below. Thanks for watching, subscribe and like.